Hello. You hear it all over the news. PayPal getting hacked, Microsoft getting hacked, government agencies getting hacked. But what exactly does getting hacked mean? If you do any type of Google searching for what is an attack or about various attacks that have happened, you'll probably come up with a lot of technical jargon that may or may not give you a headache. To give this video a little bit more context, I will be going over the solar winds attack, which is one of the biggest and most sophisticated cyber attacks that has ever happened. I'll be using the MITRE ATT&CK framework. Here is a bird's eye view of the solar wind attack. Don't worry, I'll be going over exactly what this graph means. Let's back up a little bit. How did they discover the attack? Well, they first figured this out when FireEye disclosed that someone stole some of their pen testing tools. After an investigation of this incident, they uncovered details about a Trojan backdoor hidden within solar winds Orion product. This affected about 18,000 of their customers because this was a third party software. Anybody who used this software could potentially be affected. How did the attackers figure out what to do, where to go? The first step in any cybersecurity attack is reconnaissance. This is where you're going to gather information about potential targets, trying to find weaknesses, and trying to find easiest ways to get into the network. Some of the common techniques used is going to be searching the internet for information about them using social media platforms, examining public records to find information about subjects such as Nexus, Lexus, and other documents publicly made available. They're not doing anything yet. This is pretty passive. Just trying to figure out a strategy in a way to go forward. The next phase after they're done with the recon is going to be resource development. This is where a technique used by adversaries to create, purchase, or steal resources that can be used to support operations. This can include a wide variety of things such as infrastructure, accounts, capabilities, which can be leveraged to aid in other phases. In the case of the solar winds attack, they used malware and code signing certificates. This malware was called Sunspot, and it was used to monitor and learn about solar winds Orion build process, including the running processes. Once the attackers had gathered enough intelligence about the solar winds build process, they likely leveraged this for their test to plan the next phase. That was to embed the sunburst malware in the Orion software build. In spring of 2020, a software update of SolarWinds Orion became available and was digitally signed. The update was made to 18,000 customers. Authorized system administrators go and fetch these updates. It was IT teams who unknowingly distributed this malware because we trusted the certificate. What this did is it installed a hidden Trojan backdoor. They have a way in, and now they're staying doormat for 12 to 14 days. The most common way that is used for initial access is usually through something called a phishing attempt, which is where you get an email that is being an actual email and then you click on a link or you give information that you shouldn't have given and then they're able to get initial access to that way. After they have initial access, which they do, now it's time to move on to the fourth step, which is the execution phase. At this point, the hacker has all of the information they need to get into the target system and make changes to the software. The adversary is trying to run malicious code. In the solar winds attack, what was used was PowerShell, Windows Command Shell, and scheduled tasks. They might use a remote access tool to run a PowerShell script that does remote system discovery. They may use task scheduling utilities to execute malicious code on a local or remote system, provided that they have proper authentication. The next phase that hackers usually go on to is a phase called persistence. If we look at this graph in the timeline, we actually didn't discover the attack until like a year and a half later. Adversaries use persistent techniques to maintain access to systems across restarts, change credentials, and other type of interruptions. Just because they were on the network doesn't mean they got very much information. They made malicious registry entries and the use of task scheduling utilities and the use of remote access tools to maintain persistence. 
Now that they have their foothold and they're on the network, they're getting all of this great information, they need to escalate the privileges they have. While they may have access to the network, oftentimes for what they want to do, such as extracting all of the credit card data, you're going to need a much higher level position. Some common accounts that they may want access to our local administrator, user account with admin-like access. In the case of the solar winds attack, they targeted and abused SAML tokens. And this not only allowed the attackers to have privilege escalations, but also enabled them to expand into the cloud environment, such as Azure Active Directory. They may have also configured system settings to automatically execute a program during system boot or log on to main persistence or gain higher level privileges. If we look here at the graph provided by Microsoft, it goes into how basically they exploited the trust that systems have naturally. After they have escalated their privileges, they're probably very worried and they really need to do defense evasion. The blue team is watching. They must ensure that they don't leave any traces. There are many different ways to do this, but in terms of the solar winds attack, what the attackers did to evade defense evasion was one of them was to stay dormant for 12 to 14 days. That way enough time had elapsed. Even if something was detected, the relationship between these two incidences wouldn't really be correlated. The malware also made numerous checks to identify that it was running. It was in a legitimate environment before Sunburst attempted to connect out to its command and control, which is what it's, it talks to and how this malware is being controlled. It camouflaged itself within normal data. After all of this, and they have really got a foothold in the system, they have escalated privileges, now they're really going to want to steal more credentials. Credential access in this phase consists of techniques for stealing credentials like account names, passwords. By gaining those necessary passwords, they'll gain entry into the system and can install malicious software. In the case of the solar winds attack, what was used was DC sync. And this is an attack that allows an adversary to simulate the behavior of a domain controller and retrieve password dia via domain replication. This is used as a precursor for a golden ticket attack. The end goal of all of this is to be able to impersonate anyone in Active Directory that they want, including privileged administrators, as those would be really great permissions to get. After they have gotten those credentials and all of that, the adversary is feeling pretty comfortable now. They got the credentials. Now it's time to do a little exploring in the discovery phase. It's time to strategize. Even though they have access to the network and they have these passwords, they don't have the data that they want. And because this was a way into many other networks, that's really what they wanted. And they didn't quite have that yet. So they're gonna go and discover more and figure out how to get where they want to get. They may attempt to get a listing of local system accounts, may try to get a listing of domain accounts, list of email addresses, a cloud service dashboard GUI with stolen credentials to gain useful information from an operation cloud environment. So now they're collecting all of this data. And at this point, in the attack. They're trying to gather all of the information and also exfiltrate that data off of the network. This data may include system and network information such as files, folders, processes, services, password hashes, credentials, and configuration data. They may use various methods to collect this data such as remote service to gain authorized access to internal systems, archive via utility, which is a technique used by adversaries to archive data on a system and exfiltrate it in a compressed format. After they collect all of this, they're really going to want to maintain communication with their command and control servers, also called C2 and CNC, which are used by attackers to maintain communications with compromised systems within a target network. The attacker used the compromised SolarWinds Orion platform to establish a command and control infrastructure to run malicious code spread it to other systems and exfiltrate data from the victim's network. The attackers use custom built backdoors for the C2 infrastructure and subdomain techniques to ensure the communication was unique and not easily detectable. They also use domain generation algorithms, which is a technique used by cyber attackers to generate new domain names and IP addresses for malware, command, and control servers. This makes it very hard, if not impossible, for threat hunters to detect and contain the attack. 
Finally, after all of their hard work, we're going to go into the next phase, and that is exfiltration. It's time to steal the data that they came for. After all of that hard work, it's time to extract data. Sometimes they will get access to the entire system, and or they'll only have one piece of the puzzle, such as one single file. So just because they have access to the network doesn't mean they can access everything on that network and everything is compromised and everything attached to that is compromised. Sometimes it's just a little small piece. In terms of the solar winds attack, the way they exfiltrated the data is they did it over a web service, which is a technique used to send data over HTTP or HTTPS without having to directly connect to the victim system or bypass any firewalls. After all of that has happened, then the next phase in this is impact. And the impact phase of an attack is where the damage is inflicted. During this entire time, you may or may not know that attackers are <laughs> breaching your network until later on, but the attackers also don't want to leave traces behind. They could do ransomware, malware, data destruction, data manipulation, or any of that sort. SolarWinds attack didn't really get this far as it was discovered before it could do any very serious damage. The SolarWinds was probably one of the most sophisticated examples of malware, it really is leading leaders to rethink about software. If you're interested in a cybersecurity career, maybe working on the defense side, I do have an entire playlist about how to start a cybersecurity career.